welcome back to Wood Turner's Journal. I'm Jared Toth, and today we're going to be doing a project using canary wood and uh, bloodwood. Uh, I've never used either one of them before, but for this project I wanted contrasting uh, woods, and I always use, uh, you'll see in a lot of my videos, I always use black walnut. There's a reason I think it's absolutely beautiful. That's why I uh, use it. It it's, has to be my favorite wood. Um, but, so I wanted to do something a little bit different and um, I knew I wanted a lighter color and I didn't want to continue to uh, use uh, black walnut, walnut all the time. So I ended up finding this blood wood, which I've never used before, but I think it's actually, uh, I think it's going to look really nice. I think that's a, a nice looking wood as well. So they're two contrasting colors, and today we're going to be doing more of a segmented piece. Um, it's not segmented in the way, and I know there's going to be plenty of people that get mad and maybe say what I'm going to do is a waste of wood, um, but um, there's two reasons that I'm doing it. Uh, you'll see and I'll explain it later on why I'm doing it this way. It's a variation of something that I saw somebody else do, and I thought it looked beautiful when it was done. Um, and the second reason is uh, it's my wood, so you know I'll do what I want with it, I guess. So that being said, uh, what we're doing first is I measured the boards. The um, the smallest board is this board, and it's seven and a quarter. So um, I actually just kind of took uh, the neck, uh, the blood wood, ran it through the uh, table saw, the piece that I was going to use, and then I. Uh, and then just to make it seven and a quarter really fast and then i'll show you uh i set up a little setup for my miter saw and then i cut the pieces seven and a quarter inch uh long and that way we have seven and a quarter inch square pieces so i'll show you that next so each board is only seven and a quarter inch wide so to make a square i'm uh, obviously have to cut it to seven and a quarter and what I did is I set up a little block and this is seven and a quarter it comes out to. Exactly, so I'm gonna just basically keep on cutting this down, um, all the boards, until I get the, uh, the total height and everything I want. I'm estimating about six pieces of the canary and then um, four pieces of the blood wood. I may need more of the canary, we'll see when we stack it up. So let's cut one right here. All right, that's one. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna keep on cutting these and then we'll see where we're at when they're all cut. So let me, let me explain why I'm doing it the way that I'm doing. And like I said, I'm gonna end up wasting a lot of wood, but it's gonna give me a different look than if I was to do something like this. This is a segmented piece. This is, um, uh, the first thing that I've ever done on my own on my own lathe. Uh, I don't have a video for it I wish I did but I wasn't making videos at that time and um, It's it's my hot air balloon uh, segmented piece and it's using uh, uh, maple and it's using uh, black walnut and you could see the variations in color because you know, with a segmented piece, you cut the pieces, you glue them together, and then piece it together. And it gives you, you know, a look and it looks good. But what I saw somebody else do, um, and he just made a bowl, and I actually, uh, I want to make a uh, hollow form with a lid, a box, if you will, um, is, what, is what I want to end up making. But you could see it easily in this. He made a bowl and I thought it looked beautiful, but you see how the grain curves because the wood, the tree actually goes around in a circle like that. So you could see the curving of all the grains. Now we're going to glue these just like this, but not exactly. What he ended up doing was he staggered each piece with all the with the cur curves going, but it's gonna go every other one. So you're gonna get end grain, side grain, end grain, side grain, end grain, side grain. 
And he did it with a bowl, and it was just a simple little thing I saw a picture of, and I, I thought it looked uh, really cool. So I thought, wow, what if it was bigger, you know? So you can't really get that effect if I was to cut up the pieces and then glue them together. Yes, I would use a lot less wood, um, but like I said, I mean, uh, I, I want to give it a go. The, the key to this is, is because I'm using very expensive wood to do that. So, um, but the key is don't mess it up. <laughs> you know, I got the wood and I'm going to do it, but it, it, it's fine as long as I don't mess up the project. So, um, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue up all these pieces. Now I'm going to tell you, so once again, even these, I'm going to stagger. It's going to be like that. So, you know, end grain, side grain there. And we're gonna go all the way up. I have three on the bottom. Uh, what did I do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of the canary, and then two more. These are gonna be, I'm gonna end up making, I think uh, the base is gonna be more of uh, like some legs. Um, and I have an idea of how I'm gonna do it, but we'll do it. I have to glue up because these, the blood wood is not flat, and I don't own a planer. So I have to glue these up separately and I'm going to use um, clamps to basically clamp them down flat to get it to hold. So, and the canary is really nice and flat so I shouldn't have a problem there. Um, but, uh, so let's, uh, let's get that, let's get it glued up. Okay, so I've brushed the spread on the glue. I got a big thing of glue and like I said, so we're going to alternate these. I'm going to get that set up right now. And then all we do is glue it up. All right. So I'm going to start with gluing up the canary wood because there's more of those and I could do those all at once. So I put those to the side just like that. Remember on this, stuff like this, too much glue is always better. Get all the edges. I'm not going to be able to clamp up the other two because this kind of took up all my clamps. So um, when we come back, I will have that done. I'm going to let these uh, dry for a couple hours and then I'll, uh, I'll, I'll glue up the other one. And when we come back, everything will be dry and then we'll, we'll glue it all together really fast. All right, here we are. I have it all glued up. I have the two blood wood on top and the two blood wood. This is the bottom, like I said, and um, I went ahead and I glued another little just scrap piece of wood that I had lying around uh, in order to make a tenant. Um, I'm not sure if uh, I, I think I'm going to end up using it, but if I'm not, I'll just take it off. But it's better to be safe than sorry. But right now I'm planning on that's how I'm planning on holding on to the bottom. And uh, this is tricky because this is a lot of um, side grain, end grain, side grain, end grain, side grain, end grain, all the way down. So um, I need to round this out. I have it mounted and it's balanced pretty well. And so uh, I'm going to start on this side and just kind of uh, use my 
my bowl gouge and try to uh, ride the bevel here. And um, that's the best way to do the uh, end grain cut nice and smooth. There'll be a nice slice on it. Um, but you know, I gotta be careful that, cause this is square and I need to make sure I stay within here and I don't get a catch there. So if you try this at home, be careful. This is how I'm gonna do it. And I'll probably just, I'm gonna take my time. I'm not gonna rush it. And uh, that's, that's my plan of uh, to round this out really fast. So then I could start shaping it the way that I want. So let's, uh, we'll get started on that. So obviously when I'm starting it here, trying to get the very edge, I got a little bit of a catch, but I'll smooth that out. It doesn't really matter, but this is, this is coming out beautifully. But I wanna explain what I'm doing. I'm, I'm bringing it in and I'm kind of, I keep on just scooping it out, scooping it out. And I could barely see the edge as, as it's spinning, but I, I still could see it. And I'm just slowly kind of just hacking this away. I want. You know, I'm doing a kind of a rough cut and then like, you know, on here I came back in and I did it, you know, I, I, I'm kind of smoothing it out really nice, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's slow going, but that's uh, the best way. Um, some of you may have a better way of doing it and then by all means do it that way, but this is how I'm doing it. So anyways, uh, I'm going to keep at it. Um, Maybe I'll change the angle so you could get a better view. And uh, we'll keep going. Yeah, I went ahead and sharpened uh, my chisel. It uh, definitely started getting dull on me a little bit. So I'm going to start up again and uh, get it basically here all the way down. All right, here we are, I flipped it around. Um, I have it mounted to my chuck now. Uh, it's pretty secure. And this is the bottom, and once again, this is the top. This is the, the middle part. Um, so these are gonna be, uh, like I said, I wanna make some kind of legs. Um, and I have an idea of the shape I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna use my bowl gouge to start. Uh, I may get some complaints, I may use my scraper. 
uh, just to do some fine uh, detailing on, uh, on the curves that I want. And um, I'm just gonna play around with it. Like I said, I have an idea, nothing set in stone. We'll see, we'll see uh, what, how it comes out. Okay, well, I think I lied to you. I think I said I was gonna do the, the bottom first, but I decided I wanted to get the ultimate shape of, of this. I think I like this. I may need to round this out a little bit more, um, but it, with sandpaper, it may smooth out. I'm not sure. Um, and now I think I'm gonna try to do the legs. I thought it was probably best to get the overall shape before I end up doing the, uh, the bottom and the top. This is gonna be really easy at the top. I know what I'm doing. It's just gonna be some wings. Probably I'm gonna lose a lot of this. Um, and then we'll do a lid separately. So let's start on uh, let's start on these on the bottom base here. So I want to point out something. This is why I said using the uh, scraper, some of you are not going to like it. It's not necessarily the correct thing to use. And you could see right here, um, this is end grain and it does not like to um, basically cut it smoothly like the rest of this. So you get this little tiny bit of tear out. But I'll tell you my reasoning on why I did it is using my bowl gouge and with the angle that I have to go and how I want it rounded I felt it was going to be a lot more difficult to get the shape that I wanted with my bowl gouge um, some of you may have no problem you may be able to do it no problem but my bowl gouge uh, it's it's pretty large and trying to get in this nice and wavy uh, I felt it was too much so it's not a problem I'm just gonna I mean it's gonna be more sand work for me um, but uh, like I said for, for to do that that was probably uh, I, I thought the easiest way to get in there and get the get uh, the shape that I wanted so now I'm gonna uh, do the top we'll see uh, I may start with the bowl gouge but I may end up with the scraper again we'll see
Okay, that's that's it. That's about the shape, I think. Um, you know, I have to make a lid here, hollow it out still. I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'm not going to show it, but I'm going to sand this down. Um, get rid of, like I said, my little uh, catch mark. Like, catches here um, on the end grain. Uh, we'll make it smooth, ready to go, and then uh, then I'll start hollowing it out. All right, so when we come back, we'll uh, hollow it out really fast. Well, I have it all sanded down, and technically, I you know, I could be ready to go to start uh, hollowing it out, but leave it to me to make things a little bit more complicated than they have to be. As I'm working on this and doing all this, I decided that, you know what, I want to make this thing the whole lid. But if you could see this little bit of blood wood here, um, I like that little lip. So in order to do this, I'm going to have to cut this off, glue another piece on here, and then I need to um, basically shape it down and bring it down. Also, I decided this, this, since this is going to be the lid, I want to kind of uh, change the top a bit, make a hole, and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to make a, uh, a finial out of it. These are two blocks that I uh, um, glued together. So basically, I need to do that first. I'm going to get the, uh, the diameter of how, you know, how thick this is going to be and then make a you know, just a basically a little recess at the top of this as well. Uh, so we could glue it in place. Um, so I'll start by, uh, I'm going to take this off and then I'll get this between two centers and then we'll, uh, I'll round it out really fast and do the shape that I want. Uh, but I think it's going to make it, uh, you know, make it a lot more unique. Um, it's, it's nice now. And once again, I'm going to, I'm going to turn these into legs, but I think that's going to bring the piece over the top, hopefully. Um, you know, I couldn't plan that before. I, <laughs> I had to wait until I was uh, nearly complete with the outside to decide, you know, make things harder. Anyways, that's what I'm going to do. I have to, uh, I'm going to get this off, put this between two centers, then we'll put it back on, make sure, you know, I make a uh, recess the, the right um, diameter, and then, uh, and then cut this off and glue another piece of wood on and uh, start going from there. As you can see, we're we're almost there. I just got. I just have to take off a hair. That's absolutely perfect.
All right, that's all I want. And I'm gonna sand it up and pop off this top. Okay, I have it all sanded down. It's already shining pretty good, but um, the finish, I've never done this before. I'm going to use uh, OB Shine Juice. We'll see how that goes. It's a, a basically a, a, a friction sealer and polisher. I'm going to polish this up and then we'll take uh, this off and then uh, we'll glue another piece of uh, blood wood at the top around that. And uh, let's start. Once again, I've never used this before, so we'll see how it goes. That looks pretty good. It's shining. I'm probably gonna do, uh, I'm gonna let it dry for a few minutes and maybe do a couple more coats, but that looks real good. I'm kinda happy with that. It's smooth, it's nice. So I'm skipping ahead here. So basically to get the top off, I started with my parting tool to basically make the mark of where I want it. I didn't want to go too far with this. This isn't that long and I can't really get it in there. So I just, I kind of went in, I'll say maybe uh, an inch or so. And then I went ahead and uh, it's a dovetail saw, but I went ahead and I used this to saw it the rest of the way off. So it's completely off. And then, and then I took a, uh, another piece of blood wood and it's probably about a half an inch thick, but I'm gonna maybe shave some of it off. I only want a little bit of a lip on there. And I glued it overnight and I, I held it on really tight with clamps, make sure that it was flush and everything. I also used my chisel a little bit, you know, to true it up, make sure that the bottom uh, or the top of this was flat. So it would um, be nice and flush. And next, I'm going to basically uh, round this out and then we'll start hollowing this piece out so I could uh, get this piece off the chuck because there's other things I need to uh, use the chuck for, uh, you know, the lid and everything else to, to finish what I want to do. So uh, we'll do that next. <laughs> drilled out to the depth gave me a little bit of a hole to work with I have my Carter hollow roller system and a brand new tip on the end with the uh, hook um, it's my only second time using this thing the jury's still out not sure how I feel about it yet I think I like it but uh, I don't want to judge it too soon because using it just one time it's uh, everything all the adjustments already shifted on me I guess you know that could be normal but um, you know, it's kind of a process to get it set up a little bit. So here we are. I'm going to, uh, I gave the best view that I could for you, but I know it's kind of dark in there, but it's uh, probably the better view. And, uh, here I am. I'm going to, I'm going to try to hollow it out here. Okay, so uh, 
I didn't show all of the hollowing. Um, getting it actually set up, it, it gave me some problems. Um, uh, this is extremely, this canary wood is extremely hard wood and it really didn't want to cooperate. And this is kind of an advanced project anyways, because it's a lot of end grain, long grain, end grain, long grain. So, um, you know, getting it to cooperate inside, um, I ended up after playing with it a while, I shut off the camera and I kept on. It, it took kind of a while to do it. And then I realized what I had to do was, you know, with the whole hollowing system, it's supposed to be a completely straight um, but I kept getting catches. So what I ended up doing was tilting it down a little bit. So it just lightly scraped. And then um, you're supposed to keep working an area back and forth, but it did not like the fourth motion. It, uh, it kept on wanting to catch when I did that. So basically I had to just do a nice gentle scrape. Um, and I did that and then to make sure that everything was nice, smooth and even in there, I just uh, I got it out of the system and then I gently did this by hand, uh, did the bottom and everything else. Uh, like I said, it was, a, it was actually a process to do. It would have been a long, uh, real long video if I would have shown you everything. And uh, I, I was getting annoyed to tell you the truth and so that's, that's not good for, uh, for YouTube. You know, so um, anyway, so now I'm at the point I'm going to uh, sand the inside. I'm not going to bore you with that. I could only reach so far in there and uh, but it's pretty, pretty smooth. Like I said, because I, I kind of did a real light uh, cutting of the edges uh, with this at the end uh, freehand. And then so I'm going to sand what I can and then I'm going to uh, polish this up with the shine juice and then um, uh, we'll flip it around. Take off the tenon and then uh, then we'll make the legs on it. Okay, so <clears throat> how I think to do the, uh, this is the best solution I came up with on how to uh, take out the material to make the legs. I'm using my dado blade on my saw. I'm going to have to keep edging away at it. And I made this kind of a jig where I uh, basically uh, uh, cemented it down. And so it won't move on me and I went all I did the bottom I went all around and hopefully it doesn't shift too much and I'm basically just gonna keep on following it all the way through and uh, That's kind of my best solution on on how to do this so That being said Let's uh, let's try to do it and hope I don't mess this up square to uh, the whole uh, hollow form here and I went a one one and a half inches exactly in so I want to make sure that I'm doing the same on the other side so I'm, I'm gonna mark it to make sure I don't go any further than that so my legs will be perfect <laughs> got it off. I think I like it. So now it's time to finish the lid. I got it mounted up. I just need to square this off so I could glue another um, bloodwood board up to it so we can make it where it fits really nice and snug.
That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to glue up the other board. I think after sanding, it should be absolutely perfect. It's a bit snug, but I think uh, once I take down just a hair and sand, it's gonna fall in there perfect. So I'm not gonna show it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna just gonna sand this up, get everything nice and flush, and then um, I'll glue on the handle, and when we come back, it'll be completely done. All right, here we are. Uh, it's complete. The lid is uh, completely done. It's a uh, nice and snug fit. It's uh, I love the way that it came out. I think it's uh, great. It took me a while. Sorry about the delay for, uh, for the video. Uh, those who follow me on a regular basis, uh, this one took, um, uh, it took quite a while with all the glue up and everything else and then changing my mind on a lot of it and how I want to do and then gluing pieces. Um, it, it definitely took me a while. Um, once again, I want to thank everybody for uh, everyone writing in uh, uh, nice comments and everyone following me. Um, if you don't follow me, please subscribe uh, to my channel. I, I appreciate every, uh, every single person that subscribes. And um, I also want to bring up, I, I talked about in my past two videos, I uh, started a Facebook uh, Woodturner's Journal page for, um, you know, basically to show off your work and you get kind of a sneak preview of things that I'm working on. Uh, before they come out so you'll know what to expect and uh, and it's overall just a place for uh, other wood turners and people inspiring to wood turn or just interested in it to to connect and uh, show off their work and that's basically it once again i want to uh, thank everybody out there for watching and uh, stay tuned uh, next time for my next video Thank you.